which is a bald head scallywag named Monice. Yes, Monice, come to the front, ma'am. You used to be my girl. But now you acting like you're not taking the medication that the doctor has prescribed. So we're going to have to talk. But before we get into that, I would like to remind everybody we're going to Thailand. Yes, we're going to Thailand in June, okay? Make sure to go to ResetByDesignWellness.com. Get your words right, bitch. Go to www.ResetByDesignWellness.com to sign up, okay? We are going to Phuket, Thailand in June, girl. It's going to be a luxurious happening. This is the second Reset by Design Wellness trip that I have been on, that we have done together. And girl, I cannot wait. We had an amazing time the last time, okay? And there is only one more discount available, 5% off if paid in full using Bondi5, okay? So if you wanna come and you wanna get your little percentage off, use code Bondi5, okay? I'm gonna put that in the description box after the video. All right. Can somebody, one of my moderators, please go ahead and put that in a chat. Bondi five for five percent off for the Thailand trip. Okay. Cause we we're gonna get into it. Now let's go ahead and get into the bald head scallywag. Where are my kids? Was I pregnant? Where's the medication? Why is you stealing money from that man, Moniece? And I need for y'all to understand, back in the day when y'all used to bully Monice and say that she wasn't a good mom, I used to defend Monice, okay? I have had Monice's back for years, girl, for years. And I'm with you when you right, but I can't stand you hoes when y'all wrong and y'all just want clout and y'all just want attention because that's what this is giving. Ever so often, Monice comes out on a topic that has absolutely nothing to do with her and just has the most weird observation or outlook and she gets dragged for it and then she disappears back to her side of the internet for a little while until the next topic that comes out and she just says some outlandish shit and then everybody is like, what the fuck is going on? Well, you know, the little munchkins gotta stick together. The little munchkins gotta stick together. Girl, I don't know what be wrong with y'all. I really don't know. Y'all really have an unnecessary, unhealthy allegiance to losers. Shout out to Cat Williams. And I don't understand why. Monice got her weird ass on the internet and said, if I were Megan Kanker's family, I would take every red cent from those single sales. I lawyer up and that video will be snatched from every platform. I super emotional damages and I demand that the bar be changed and I gag order the artist, period. You have to live in using that the killer is still alive and well. Girl, what the fuck that got to do with Megan Pete? That Megan Kanka's killer is still alive and well. What's she supposed to do about that? They still enacted a law that can be used and quoted. A law in your departed daughter's name and honor is passed. And now for the first time in over a decade, your daughter is trending. Your wound is reopened because a bitch used it as a girl. <clears throat> wound reopened because somebody mentioned a law. The wound is going to always be there, baby. It's going to always be there. I don't understand why this instance of using Megan's law. Girl, every time you get a, a piece of paper in the fucking mail that says there's a sex offender in your area, I get them in the mail. I've seen them several times since I've been living in my house. So I know that they pop up all the time. So you mean to tell me that right there wouldn't be a reminder that would send Megan Kanker's family into depression because they saw the sex offenders registry that they went through extreme lengths to get a law enacted for. So let me get this straight. Because Monice, I'm not even about to read the rest of this bullshit that you on right now. Okay. I'm going to just say it like this. The law was put into place. Because there are men who don't want to get put on a registry so that they can move into your neighborhood and take advantage of the fact that you don't know who the fuck they are and what they have done. So Megan Kanker's family decided to come up 
with Megan's law that makes it a law for registered sex offenders. And a lot of y'all were like, it's about being a murderer. Yeah, Kenneth Petty is a, is a murderer too. He's been convicted of that as well. You can go and Google his rap sheet if you'd like, because it's on the internet. So he, Kenneth Petty, hold up, let me pull it up for you so we can see what we should really be worrying about. Because it's crazy to me that if we care more about men or people, period, trying to evade the law by not putting themselves on the sex offender offenders registry list. If that's really something we care about, why are we mad at Megan Thee Stallion for pointing out that Nicki Minaj is married to a man that continues to try to e and evade being on the sex offenders registry list? He pleaded, I'm sorry, he pleaded guilty to first degree manslaughter. You can act like that's not murder if you want to, but okay, let's see. Minaj became involved with Petty's legal issues when his alleged great victim, Jennifer Huff, filed a harassment lawsuit against the rapper and her husband. August 2021, because everybody wants to keep talking about, oh, this is 30-year-old T. He was 15 years old. Y'all keep trying to act like this some old shit. Okay, so let me speed y'all up to the recent. The August 2021 complaint claimed Minaj and Petty tried to use their money, power, and fame to threaten her into walking back her great accusations. She claimed Minaj called her personally to request Huff change her story and later offered her $20,000 to sign a prepared statement that recanted her accusations. As a direct result of the actions of defendant Minaj and defendant Petty, plaintiff has been traumatized her entire life, the lawsuit read. Plaintiff has never felt safe since being raped by the defendant. The suit against Minaj was later dropped in January 2022. It doesn't mean she didn't do it. It just means that woman could no longer afford to fight somebody who makes as much money as Nicki Minaj. Miss me with the bullshit. Okay? Either way, he goes on to violate his probation in 2023 when he threatened Cardi B in an offset. So he's been on house arrest for 120 days, okay? Which is all an extension. And I'm looking for the part where it talks about him trying to not put his name on the sex offenders registry list as of recent, like in the past couple of years. It's really annoying to me that y'all keep trying to act like this is old news. It's not old news. It's not. Yes, here it is. Petty was arrested again in March 2020 because he failed to register as a sex offender when he moved in with Minaj in California. He originally pled not guilty and posted $100,000 bail, according to records assessed by People. But in September 2021, he pled guilty during a virtual hearing and faced up to 10 years in prison. In, 20, in July 2022, Petty was sentenced to a year of house arrest and three years of probation, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office, plus a 55 thousand dollar bond i mean fine so that means that just in 2025 he'll be off probation for this so if if he's on i'm sorry yeah if he is on probation because of this megan's law situation i'm trying to understand why this man, Megan Kanka's father, is more upset at Megan the Stallion for the line than he is at Nicki Minaj for using her wealth and, and her access to help her husband evade the very law the father enacted in honor of his daughter. It sounds to me like somebody might be getting paid, somebody might be racist. Somebody might not know what's going on, but just mad that they see a black woman with her ass in the camera talking about Megan's law. And I said that it sounded racial when I first did my my little cute short that I put up here. OK, it's on YouTube. It's on TikTok. It's on Instagram. I said it originally it was coming off like it was some racial shit. And also like some old conservative man wants to get more bothered by cuss words than a man actually trying to evade the law that you helped enact. 
make that make sense for me because it don't so monice even though this man is saying that he's so upset about this and he might go and, and, and sue Meg the Stallion. I don't think he has a leg to stand on, first of all. Second of all, I have to wonder, is he in his right mind? If he thinks that that's going to go through, I have to wonder who called him, who emailed him, who got him upset about this situation. Is he being paid by somebody? I have so many questions. Does he see it as a money grab? And are we going to bring up charges against Nicki Minaj for using it in Bigfoot? Hold up. Let, let's let's go and pull up those Bigfoot lyrics again. Let's go and pull up those Bigfoot lyrics again so we can read the Megan's Law line in Bigfoot because Nicki Minaj used it as well. So, Monice, where is your where is your little message to Nicki Minaj for saying this little begging whore? talking about Megan's law for a free beat. You could hit Megan raw. If you a ghostwriter party in Megan jaw, that's not vulgar. That's not disrespectful to use Megan's law in this context. Oh no. It's only messed up when Megan, the stallion does it. Am I, is that correct? Is that correct? <laughs> Oh, I, 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 I'm not done, y'all. I'm not done. Monice, I didn't talk about this, but who's Joe Smith? It says former NBA first overall pick Joe Smith has claimed that loving hip hop star Monique Slaughter forged over $109,000 in checks while they were dating. You talking about getting somebody sales and you stealing from your nigga? Girl, what? Girl, what? Smith told DJ Vlad that his financial advisor first alerted him to nine checks totaling $109,000. Furthermore, Smith later confirmed the claims through a private investigator. Slaughter had re reportedly sent all of them to a mystery acquaintance, Timothy Carr. However, Smith also claimed that he was unable to file charges against Lauder because the authorities ruled it as he said, she said. The revelation came after Smith opened up about his financial situation. He claimed that despite making $61 million during his NBA career, he only ever saw $18 million of it due to taxation. Furthermore, Smith revealed that he was put into debt by his first divorce. However, Smith also took responsibility for his own actions, saying his infidelities cost him his marriage. Furthermore, he noted that his family's current financial instability was a result of poor investments and expensive impulsive purchases on his part. However, the situation between Smith and his wife continues to get more and more bizarre. Last week, Smith's wife returned to It Is What It Is at the request of Mace to provide his co-host Cameron a massage live on the show. Oh, wow. Well, that's nasty. This is messy. Y'all do anything for clout. Seems like Joe Smith likes to mess around with thirsty clout chasing ass women. Seems like he needs to pick better. <laughs> he needs to pick better because he didn't pick good with his first wife. If she going on TV to give Mace massages and shit. And um, damn sure didn't pick good with Monice. If she's stealing checks from a nigga. I think it's so funny when somebody is stealing money from a, from a nigga they laying up with. You stealing and shit, but you mad at Megan for Megan's law and feel like Megan Kanka's family is entitled to Megan's sales. Well, shouldn't that mean that you should also feel like Joe is entitled to $109,000 of your fucking money since you stole from him? It's crazy how y'all be in a house burning to the fucking ground, but throwing slugs at everybody else. I'ma just say it. Lil Fizz. Lil Fizz. Lil Fizzle Pop. And your mama was right about you, bitch. Go get your medication and get the fuck off the internet. <laughs> Click the live tab for the full video.